about environmental advocacy, community illness to community wellness. Nicole Walker. Imagine these scenarios occurring in the same day. There's a strong rotten egg or in your neighborhood. Yellow water's coming out of your faucet. You'd notice a trip hazard at work. And of course, construction is affecting traffic. Do you know what to do? In my community of South Los Angeles, California, these are some day-to-day -day occurrences that our citizens experience. Now, because of what I do for work, my family and friends come to me for advice, but I can't be everywhere at once. A famous saying goes, many hands make light work. So I'm going to show you some simple ways to help me advocate for safer communities and workplaces. 14 years of planning led me to my purpose. I wanted to be a doctor to heal and help people. I think I was being redirected to my purpose when I had to change my major from kinesiology to urban studies and planning while attending Cal State Northridge. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. I fell in love. As I advanced in my classes, I began to see connections between the human body and the city. For example, in the human body, the veins and the arteries are known as the circulatory system, whereas in a general plan or the body of the city, the streets and roads are known as the circulation element. While living at my grandmother's house near USC, I was able to discover how I could holistically help my community and my people with through placemaking, where everyone could feel like they belonged and protected. My first real job was at a redevelopment agency. Redevelopment areas are lower income, blighted communities, and there was a sense of pride in providing the residents with jobs, affordable housing, and beautiful buildings. When redevelopment went away in California, in the environmental planning department, I made sure that projects we're not being harmed environmentally by reviewing federal and state environmental documents. Years later, in a field known as industrial hygiene and occupational safety and health, while working for one of the largest school districts in the nation, I also made sure that the schools were safe working and learning environments for students and staff. I now holistically am able to help my people and I make a great living while doing so. Which leads me to this. The COVID-19 pandemic was another canary in the coal mine for black people and other communities. It showed us that we had a long way to go in addressing disparities. The remnants of systemic and systematic racism in our housing and jobs had left our communities a petri dish for the virus. And now is the time that we take the negative effects of this COVID-19 pandemic and turn it into community power using federal and state regulations that focus on clean air, water, and a safe workplace. You can help me advocate for safer communities for ourselves, families, and friends, all while showing our children direction and purpose. So let's take our wonderful Crenshaw District, for instance. Crenshaw's Air and Water is managed by the South Coast Air Quality Management District, or AQMD, and the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, or LADWP. The Clean Air and Water Acts require these agencies to monitor pollutants in our air and water, and they are always eager to investigate any concerns from the public. So, if you see some dust coming from a construction site, or you smell a strange rotten egg odor in your neighborhood, go to the AQMD website and file a complaint. If your water isn't clear, or there's also odors there too, call LADWP and they will be sure to help you. As we know, the Crenshaw District is also growing. 
and the project developer or lead agency is required to prepare California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA documents to address any environmental concerns a project may put on the community. These documents are located online or at your local public library. So if you have any concerns about a project being built in your community, you, any, any comments that you have must be addressed as well as included in the final report. Other communities have done this. In the city of Carson, there was a strange, strong rotten egg odor that was smelled citywide. I even smelled it while shopping. The citizens of that city made demands of their leadership to address the odor concerns. And the city of Carson's elected officials did a fantastic job in keeping their constituents informed of the steps that they were taking to address the odor complaint. And it has since been resolved. Now let's go to our workplaces. African Americans are overrepresented in the essential worker industries, which exposes us to COVID at a way higher rate than the rest of the population. Even in good times, these fields overwork and underpay their staff. The Occupational Safety and Health Act, or OSHA, states that all workers are entitled to a safe workplace in order to perform their job duties. Now, I'm not telling you to quit your jobs. But if you have concerns, there's ways to address them. Let your supervisor know if your work duties are negatively affecting your health. And also let them know if there's a hazard at work. And if no one listens to you, call your local OSHA office, and it will be sure to assist you further. Now, why do I feel that we need to know these tools? Because we need to advocate for ourselves also while showing our children their purpose. Several grade schools offer degrees in environmental planning and occupational safety and health with knowledge, experience, and purpose. You really can't tell us anything. We know what Crenshaw and our communities need. Who better than the roses that grew from the concrete? to represent us than to have someone else come into our neighborhoods and tell us what we need. Applying the unique experience of being black and other people of color into the environmental planning and industrial hygiene fields, we can create policies and solutions that will reduce our community's risks to chronic health issues and other problems. Malcolm X once said, when I is replaced by we, illness becomes wellness. We are the change in our communities, and we hold the keys in our hands to progress. Our communities have been through so much with the Middle Passage, Jim Crow, and mass incarceration, and yet we are still here, still smiling, as if our DNA does not hold over 400 years of pain. We are Psalm 31 through 5. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And the magic light of daybreak is just over that horizon over there. We now know what we need to do to advocate for our communities and also show our children purpose. We are the hope and dreams of our ancestors. Now let's make them proud. Thank you.